how are you, buddy? Good, good. Um, what's uh, Addicted to Pain been doing these days? Working uh, a lot around schedules and stuff? Yeah, there's, um, there's just so much going on right now. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we just got a lot to do. Um, we're working really hard. And, uh, you know, we're uh, working hard towards this tour coming up in September. Um, so we're getting all our stuff, you know, together. We have a CD release party coming up this Friday night in Albany, New York, where we're uh, where we're located here. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it's going to be a great great show. You guys going to be playing a lot of concerts, or, you know, starting September. You're saying like a U.S. tour. Correct. U.S. Uh, in the middle of September, I think we start the uh, U.S. Uh, maybe some Canada dates. Um, I'm not sure on the Canada yet, but it's been spoken about. So we're waiting to confirm that. But definitely U.S. Yes. So, what's been your uh, take on the album? Like uh, as a bass player, what type of um, you know equipment that you went and used and picked out on this album to go to the tones? Oh, that's a great question, man. I um, I use a wall bass, um, custom made bass. Um, for instance, Getty Lee. Okay. Uh, Justin Chancellor from Tool. They all have that. Uh, it's my favorite bass. Great tone. Uh, using MPEG. SVT, tube amp, uh, 810 speakers, amp peg. Um, and then when I was in the studio, uh, Alex had me rocking some other uh, distortion uh, shit that you can really hear on the on this on a CD. And it's uh, it was an extra that uh, Alex had to throw in there for me, and it was fantastic. So that's about what I use. Um, you know, a couple little different pedals here and there for distortion. Uh, I actually did not use my wah pedal on this record, but uh, full length is coming. There's gonna be a lot, a lot of shit on there, buddy. Now let's say, <laughs> let's say for a bass player, you know, uh, where do you decide to pick out what distortion box, you know, for basses? You know, considering a guitar player, oh, they want their certain uh, distortion boxes, but a bass player, on your side of the view, where do you pick it out from? Um, you, you know, it, it's um, I've tried so many of them. Um, and live they can you can really get away with it you know with someone you know something that you're okay with but when i'm when i was in the studio alex uh really showed me some different uh tones i can get with my bass uh just by cranking more gain um adding a little fuzz to it so and actually that's a great question because i'm i'm working on um getting some uh a better uh, set up, and I uh, I was just endorsed. Also, Leo Curley, the guitar player, was endorsed by Crank, mm. and they just started a line for bass now, and um, so I got endorsed for that. In fact, I'm waiting for it to come in the mail. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, and I can't wait because it has a lot of that uh, dirty, fuzzy, muddy sound. Other, you know, and the clean sound, obviously, but that muddy, muddy sound that I love to hear, uh, it's got that on that uh, bass head. And it's the first, you know, there's only three guys that really have this this uh, bass head, so I'm like, you know, fourth, fifth guy, you know, so I'm excited about it, absolutely. And Bob, when you look at it like that, it's like if you're only a select few that play these, this equipment, that means it's like a unique tone also. You know what? You got that right. You got that right. And you can go on YouTube, and this uh, guy named Chris, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, Catro, I'm not really sure, but he's one of the head guys that crank. And he's a bass player, and he has one, and it's just amazing what it sounds like. And, you know, that's on YouTube. Mm. So real life is going to be awesome. We think of the Internet, you know, with piracy and all that stuff. Uh, you know, it is what it is. I guess uh, I personally, <laughs> you know, if you you work so hard to write a song and to get it out there, and then number one, it hurts your pocket, and number two, it it just takes away the you know the essence of releasing a CD where mm. you go and you buy a physical CD at the store and you got it and you got the artwork, you got the lyrics or whatnot, you know. Now it's just over the internet, which is great. It's got great. Uh, it's got great things that they can that it does for you, and then it has the same exact you know downfalls. You know, piracy is a little bit touchy for me. 
in a sense, it can um, help out a, maybe a younger band to get promoted, but in the sense, the people that you know do this for a living cannot endure this as much because it's hurting them. Absolutely, there's so many bands on the, that you read about or be on TV or whatever. You know that that really affects them. You know it really does. It, it you know it's like going to the store and mm. you know your friend buys a CD and goes to the that new thing they got here in, uh, in Albany where you just go up and you pick a song and you burn one song and, uh, you know, you pay, a couple, you pay a couple of cents for it. You don't even get 99 cents, like, like uh, iTunes. Mm. So, you know, it, kind of, it makes you wonder, like, who's getting the fucking money for that? <laughs> yeah. The store, uh, you know? Who knows? Downfall of the big record companies, you know? You know, not to say that the independent stuff is, is fantastic, but like like we just talked about, it's got the same downfalls as it as it does uh, the recognition. You know, it, it, it's hard to uh, hard to suck up. You know. Another thing too, when you look at people going to concerts and getting you know stuff autographed, let's say by you, when it comes to the day, there's no more CDs. What will they get autographed? You know. No more CD covers. You know, I hope that doesn't come to that. You know, I really don't. I, I really, really don't because I still buy CDs. Well, you know, I, I still get stuff off of iTunes and stuff. But I'm not really I'm not really the, the big fucking pirate, you know what I mean? But And you want to know what, too, which is really, really cool, is uh, reissues of old uh, records and new bands are doing albums again. Right. And that's really cool because I collect albums, and it, you know, and I go to the store now, and you know, some some places have it, some places don't. But you know, you get a reissue of uh, "Killing Is My Business" in Megadeth. I mean, that's cool as hell, you know. Uh, so that you know, it's hard to say where we're going, man. You know, Jason, it's, it's really hard to say. But we'll see, I guess, in not too long. I mean, you're saying you're you're a record collector. What's uh, some of the obscure stuff you got in your collection that's totally rare? Uh, a lot of old Black Sabbath, uh, Van Halen, um, you know, a lot of old stuff. And plus, I got all the metal. I'm a complete metalhead, bro. <laughs> cool. And I have, like, every metal, you know, I got, I got SOD, MOD. And, in fact, I, you know, when I met Alex, I wanted to say, hey, can you sign this? But I felt like an idiot, you know. But, you know, Overkill, Testament, you know, a lot of Slayer records that, uh, that are weird because uh, Slayer released some stuff that doesn't have their name on it, and, uh, and it's worth you know you you got to buy it for fifty sixty dollars for you know an album that doesn't even say Slayer on it. Mm. They have a couple different things like that. Um, so I, I own a lot of that old 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 good stuff. Boston. There's a lot of albums that you would never have a clue that are worth money, you know. And uh, I'm a, I also collect Star Wars figures. You know. Wow, <laughs> Star Wars action figures. <laughs> now, Not too many people know that, man. Wow. We'll be on a fucking radio now. <laughs> now, now everybody knows it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know what, Bob? I'm sure tons of people do that stuff, anyways. You know what? Yeah. You go on eBay and you see these people. It's crazy. You know, the, their collections are amazing. Yeah, I love that. Stuff. I love collecting stuff. And, you know, I have since I was a kid. I actually have a lot of bases that I have, and I just bought a Rickenbacker which is like, uh, I never never had one, never played one, and uh, I, I just had, you know, going on this tour and stuff, I need I need a backup bass that I really, really need. Um, I have a ton of Fenders, but ever since I got my wall uh, a year ago, I, I haven't touched anything else, hmm. you know. So now the Rickenbacker, when I went and tried it, you know, for the first time, I was really scared. I didn't really have the money to do it, but I did it anyway, you know, type of deal. <laughs> hmm. And I got it, and I said, that, that thing's amazing. So it's, uh, I got my backup bass now. You know, we tune the C, so, um, you know, your strings are a lot looser, so you've got to completely set the bass up, your guitar up. You've got to really set it up different with the bridge and, and intonation and all that stuff. So it, you get, you got to have something to back you up in case they snap, because I'm known to snap the uh, strings. I'm just I don't know why. I, I don't know why, but... You have to get a string endorsement that can handle your uh, fingers. 
I got Dean Markley, so I have a complete big box full. <laughs> okay, and then you're taken care of. I'm taken care of, yeah. <laughs> Good yeah, stuff. I got, I, got, I got about 30 packs left, you know, compared to paying 40 bucks at the store, you know. Yeah, they can uh, be quite uh, expensive, these bass strings. Bass strings are, yeah. Guitar strings aren't so six, seven dollars, whatever. Bass strings are up there, thirty, forty bucks, depending on what you're buying, you know. So, well, I like to add that. I hope that I hope everybody will give us a chance, listen to it. Um, go to our website, um, addictedtopain.net, um, or MySpace, addicted to pain, uh, MySpace addicted to pain. Uh, I'm on Twitter. We're on. Uh, all sorts of good shit. Um, Facebook, I'm sure. Facebook, come come along on Facebook. It's a very cool site, and I update it daily. And so does uh, the other guys, you know, with all good information. There's a lot of videos and stuff like that that we put on there of, uh, you know, uh, there's interviews. Or, you know, there's a whole lot of good shit, and, and you can learn more about us. And, you know, the way I feel when I like a band, I, I, I got to learn who they are, what they're thinking, you know, when they make a song, that's that's just how I am. Mm. A musician is like that, and some people who aren't musicians are like that also. They just got to know who they are. They got to know what they are. You know, so you know, I hope people when they listen to the CD really get you know, get the lyrics off the website. Um, the lyrics are right on the website, and uh, you, you can you know, read what we got. You know, read what we're doing, and follow us when we go on tour. And you like the Facebook, it's a big meeting, you know, I think it's an excellent tool for musicians now. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think it's one of the best social networks there is, you know. I mean, look at MySpace now, compared to what it was, uh, what, two years ago. Oh, I know. You know what I'm saying, and now Facebook is like really, really taking over, and it's great because we get a lot of fans, um... It brings out people to your shows, you know. It's a uh, it's a great networking networking system. You you said a good thing there. Like the MySpace today is not delivering. I don't even barely use it anymore. I'm all on Facebook now, you know. Oh, me too. I wonder what MySpace will be doing in the near future to kick up a notch. It'll probably sell. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I mean, they're down so much money. You know, if you look at stuff like that, which I always do, you know. I'm always interested in, in uh, stuff like that, and uh, yeah, yeah. If you, you know, they're still making billions. Don't get me wrong here, you know. But compared to Facebook, which is making triple that, you know, uh, and and you get more information, you know, compared to MySpace, you get so much more information. You can put songs on Facebook. You can do whatever you want. Mm. It's great. You just slap a YouTube thing on of yourself. It's right there. Bang. You know, and, and at the same time, you're reading everybody else's stuff that's uh, talking about your band. You know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's really good. Yeah, you know, Addicted to Pain on Facebook. And um, it, it's great. There's a lot of good stuff on there. And uh, like I said, you know, get the album. It's coming out uh, September 14th, uh, Tuesday, uh, in the U.S. and in Canada. So uh, pick it up. All right. Good and stuff. Forward, good buddy. 10-4, good buddy. Ah, yes. All right, man. You have a good one, all right, this summer. Thank you, bro. I all appreciate right. it. Look forward to talk to in, talking to Addicted to Pain in the near future. Awesome. Me too. Okay, cool stuff. Have a good day, man. All right, bro. Thanks. All right, you're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye.